Yesterday I released a video showcasing my FL Sun Super Racer, which received a conveyor belt bed for automatic part ejection and autonomous processing of a print queue. To keep that video short, I decided to split it in two. So this video contains the disassembly, assembly and then wiring for the project. Let's jump straight in. You should understand that I completed this project, designing it piece by piece as I went, experimenting with packaging options and trying to use parts that I already had on hand. Because of my design as I went approach, I had a problem that required a design change halfway through. The original belt path used three idlers to create space for the power supply under the machine, but the mounting lugs on the existing FL Sun bed intersected with the top of the belt path underneath and required a change. The new design only had one idler roller, giving a simpler belt path, but did require the power supply to be mounted on the side. Because of this, you might notice in the footage the additional rollers are sometimes in view, and the parts still contain the mounting holes for the old rollers. I've also updated some parts since filming, so expect some changes there. Linked is an extensive bill of materials that goes through all of the components required to build this mod. There's a little more detail in the main video, in terms of why I picked the parts I did, but the order of this document matches the assembly steps in this video, and there's links for US and Australia for most of the parts. After preparing all of the parts, the first step you'll need to do is to disassemble the base of the Super Racer. Obviously it should be unplugged with the power off, but apart from that it's pretty straightforward. Simply keep on undoing bolts until all of the individual components are released. Some of them like the bed will be reusing, but a lot of the parts such as the sheet metal frame we can put aside because we no longer need it. Once your printer looks like this, disassembly is done. Some of the printed parts you'll notice have a false floor to avoid the need for support material. The holes in the tube caps need a 5mm drill bit to create the ball for the threaded rod. Anytime during this build, if you're unsure of a part, you can refer to the source CAD. For instance, this will let you see the way that the extrusions are placed, and to help visibility, you can right click on any part to hide it, as well as accessing the parts on the left hand side, toggling part visibility by clicking the eyeball icon. You can also right click and go to export for any of the parts, where you'll have the STL option as well as other formats if you'd like to do some editing. And you don't need an Onshape account to do any of this. We can start by assembling the lower frame using four of our corner brackets and the four equal length extrusions with the feet bolted underneath. Next come the adapter parts, M5 hardware is needed on the vertical holes as well as the horizontal holes which go to our new frame. Once these are prepped, I'd recommend resting them in place, but only in their rough positions without tightening anything. Now comes the most awkward part, lowering the upper half of the printer down and aligning it with our printed parts. Jiggling will be required to get the T-nuts to face the right way, but eventually the top half of the printer should drop into position. I would recommend doing up the fasteners for the vertical surfaces first, and these can be fully tightened. There should be just enough room to access all of them with the regular Allen key. Be sure to peek at the T-nuts to make sure they've rotated 90 degrees and they're gripping on the extrusion properly. Before tightening the other bolts, we need to align them correctly on the frame. And if we switch back to on shape, we can get any measurement by clicking on one surface and then another. Our dimension will be then shown in the lower right. Our rear adapter needs to be centered and that means 155 millimeters from the edge to the corner of the frame. Both of the side brackets should have a distance of 145 millimeters. And once you've ensured this, you can begin to tighten the fasteners. Take your time here because the accuracy of this part is essential. After double checking all of your measurements, now is the time to completely tighten up the bolts and T-nuts. We can now introduce the final piece of extrusion, which should slide up from underneath and be positioned so there's an 85mm gap between the front of the frame and this new piece. This one is less vital to get spot on, but you should still do your best to get everything accurate. As well as talking up the obvious M5 bolt that goes through the printed part, you should also install the final two corner brackets. These go on the underside and should ensure sufficient rigidity. With this step, the new base of the printer should be complete. Next, we're going to move on to the rear tube assembly, and we start by cleaning up the tube drives and inserting M5 lock nuts into each side. The holes in the tube drives are to assist you with using needle nose pliers to screw them into place. The middle of the threaded rod isn't used, so you can use vice grips to hold it. Your aim here is to get the same amount of threaded rod poking out the end of the tube. Two flange bearings per side go into our corner brackets, and we install the tube between them 
before bolting down this part to the frame. The rear edge should be flush with the frame, with the widest part being 20 mils from the corner, and the narrowest part being 60.5 millimeters from the corner. Like before, once we've verified these distances, we can tighten everything up. Time to introduce our NEMA 17 stepper motors with the plug facing upwards and backwards. M3 bolts and washers are only loosely inserted for now because we need to make sure that the stepper motor can swivel to tension the timing belt. The larger of our two pulleys is installed onto the end of the threaded rod and the smaller pulley goes onto the stepper motor output. If all of your parts match mine, you should comfortably be able to install the timing belt over the two pulleys and then rotate the stepper motor back to tension them, aligning the two pulleys if required. With a moderate amount of belt tension, the M3 bolts can be torqued up to hold the stepper motor properly in place. Now's a good time to test that the system is driving properly. We're now going to do the front roller assembly and after drilling out the holes, we're going to insert bearings into the tube idlers, followed by pushing the tubes into place with what should be a nice tight interference fit. Each corner bracket comes in three pieces and the cap piece has some false floors that need to be drilled out with a three millimeter drill bit. Each trap piece then has two M5 nuts pushed into place. These will be used for the belt tensioning system. Be sure to get them aligned before continuing. The trap should then snap into position inside the main bracket and be able to slide back and forth freely. If it does, we can then install the cap piece using M3x20 bolts that will cut their own thread as they go in. The trap should still be able to slide back and forth. From the front, we get our M5x80 screw and we screw it through the nut trap in the middle until it comes out the other side. Once the whole way in, we install a washer as well as a lock nut and with this, the tensioning system is complete and you should be able to test that it moves the trap back and forth, lefty loosey, righty tidy, by turning the tensioning bolt at the front. These two front corner brackets can then be prepped to go onto the lower frame. The aim is to have the back of the bracket touching our existing printed piece and then a 20 millimeter gap to the corner the whole way along the edge. We now line up the tube, feed through the threaded rod and once again test that our tensioning system is working and we can independently move each side of the tube and also that the tube spins freely. Next we move on to the bed and the original bed bolts straight onto our adapter piece using the original lock nuts. To protect the underside of the belt, I would recommend sanding any of the edges of the adapter plate as well as the top of the bed to minimize abrasion. We now take our side bed mounts and prepare them with more M5 hardware. Rather than using measurements to position them on the frame, use this printed bed mount helper, which is flipped upside down to be used on the opposite side. With everything aligned, tighten the three bolts, making sure to not forget the two on the underside. Another awkward step is installing the screws with the springs into our new bed mounts. You'll need to compress the springs and then push down and turn the screws at the same time, hoping they line up with the trapped nuts just long enough for you to get the threads to engage. Your aim for now is to get all four leveling screws in to stop the bed from flopping around. Using a long straight edge, we'll rest it on top of the bed and then turn the leveling screws on that side to lower it down until the underside of the ruler is just resting on the two rollers. Get this accurate now and you'll need little to no adjustment later on. The final step is the power supply. We take the main housing and the side bracket and use M3 bolts, cutting a thread to join them together. If you've changed the power supply like me with these weird terminals, you'll need to attach the mains wiring now, as it will be impossible once installed on the printer. With this done, you can temporarily install the switch into the side of the housing. The power supply can now be bolted in place using M4 bolts. You want to use the shortest ones that it's possible to get away with here. The plug comes out again and we use four M5 bolts and T-nuts to install the power supply assembly to the right hand side of the frame. There's a little wiring management piece that attaches to the back of the power supply housing using M3 bolts that cut a thread as they go. Once the wiring is in place, the plug and switch can then be bolted in permanently. And then the power supply lid covers the whole thing up to keep it tidy and safe. There's one other cable management clip to install that holds the loom going back to the top of the printer out of the way of the belt. As the mains plug is next to the power supply terminals, the wires for this can be used unaltered. However, the three 24 volt wires that come from the power supply to the printer all need to be extended by approximately 200 millimeters. This will allow them to reach the new position of the power supply. The only other wiring needed is to connect an extra stepper motor driver to run our belt stepper motors. 
I set up the jumpers on the main board for UART mode and then ran a cable out of the top enclosure down to the base of the machine where I then split the four wires into parallel by soldering, terminating in a 2x4 female DuPont connector. This lets me plug in the two new stepper motors in parallel and if one or both of the motors are turning the wrong way, I can very easily flip that plug to invert the direction. The excess for these wires can be tucked neatly into the lower extrusion. The final parts to fit after you've got the belt on are these wedges that help the part eject cleanly. They're designed to slide forward and back to account for different length belts and any other variation in parts. If you want to build this, everything you need to recreate this mod is available on printables. And please use the comment section below to give me some feedback and suggestions. That's going to wrap this video up. But if you want to learn more about the philosophy of the project and get the rest of the details such as firmware and software, please view the original video. And remember you can use the timestamps to navigate. Thank you for watching, good luck with your building, and until next time, happy continuous 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe, and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.